Hello guys, thank you for joining me. It is a rainy day here in the city of Calabar. Today we are going to examine who built the pyramids of Giza and how it was done. Homeric Origins The Great Pyramid of Giza is a defining symbol of Egypt and the last of the ancient wonders of the world. It is located in the Giza Plateau near the modern city of Cairo and was built over a 20-year period during the reign of King Khufu between 2589 to 2566 BC, also known as Shops of the 4th Dynasty, until the Eiffel Tower was completed in Paris, France in 1889 CE. The Great Pyramid was the tallest structure made by human hands in the world, a record it held for over 3,000 years and one unlikely to be broken. Other scholars have pointed to the Lincoln Cathedral Spear in England, built in 1300 CE as a structure which finally surpassed the Great Pyramid in height. But still, the Egyptian monument held the title for an impressive span of time. The pyramid rises to a height of 479 feet or 146 meters with a base of 754 feet or 230 meters and is comprised of over 2 million blocks of stones. Some of these stones are of such immense size and width such as the granite slabs in the king's chamber that the logistics of raising and positioning them so precisely seems an impossibility by modern standards. The pyramid was first excavated using modern techniques and scientific analysis in 1880 CE by Sir William Matthew Flinder Petras, who lived between 1853 and 1942 CE. The British archaeologists who set the standard for archaeological operations in Egypt generally and at Giza specifically. Writing on the pyramids in 1883 CE, Flinders Petrie noted, The Great Pyramids has lent its name as a sort of byword for paradoxes. And as moth to a candle, so are theorizers attracted to it. Although many theories persist as to the purpose of the pyramid, the most widely accepted understanding is that it was constructed as a tomb for the king. Exactly how it was built, however, still puzzles people in the modern day. The theory of Rams running around the outside of the structure to move the blocks into place has been largely discredited. So-called fringe or new age theorists abound in an effort to explain the advanced technology required for the structure, citing extraterrestrials and their imagined frequent visit to Egypt in antiquity. These theories continue to be advanced in spite of the increasing body of evidence substantiating that the pyramid was built by the ancient Egyptians using technological means which most likely were so common to them that they felt no need to record them. Still, the intricacy of the interior passages, shafts and chambers, the king's chamber and the queen's chamber and also the grand gallery as well as the nearby Osiris shaft coupled with the mystery of how the pyramid was built at all and its orientation to cardinal points encourages the persistence of these fringe theories. Another enduring theory regarding the monument's construction is that it was built on the back of slaves. Contrary to the popular opinion that Egyptian monuments in general and the Great Pyramids in particular were built using Hebrew slave labor, the pyramids of Giza and all other temples and monuments in the country were constructed by Egyptians who were hired for their skills and compensated for their effort. No evidence of any kind whatsoever from any era of Egypt history supports the narrative event described in the biblical book of Exodus. Workers' housing at Giza was discovered and fully documented in 1979 by archaeologists Lena and Hawass. But even before this evidence came to life, ancient Egyptian documentation substantiated payment to Egyptian workers for state-sponsored monuments. While offering no evidence of forced labor by a slave population of any particular ethnic group, Egyptians from all over the country worked in the monuments for a variety of reasons to build an eternal home for their king which would last through eternity. The pyramids of Giza panorama Kofu seemed to have set to work on building this grand tomb shortly after coming to power. The rulers of the Old Kingdom, governed from the city of Memphis and the nearby necropolis of Sagra, was already dominated by Joseph's pyramid complex 
while other sites such as the shore had been used by sniffery. An older necropolis, however, was also close by, and this was easy. Khufu's mother Hetzifers, the first, was buried there, and there was no other great monument to compete for attention close by. So, Khufu chose Giza as a site for his pyramids. The construction of the pyramids. The first step in constructing a pyramid after deciding upon the best location was organizing the crews and allocating resources, and this was the job of the second most powerful man in Egypt, the vizier. Khufu's vizier was Hemini, his nephew, credited with the design and building of the great pyramids. The vizier was the final architect of any building project and had to delegate responsibility for materials, transport, labor, payment, and any other aspects of the work. Written receipts, letters, diary entries, official reports to and from the palace also made clear that a great building project was accomplished at Giza under Kufu's reign. But not one of these pieces of evidence suggests exactly how pyramid was created. The technological skill evidence in the creation of the Great Pyramid still mystifies scholars and others in the present day. Egyptologists Bob Rea and Coit Hobbes comment on this and I quote, Because of their immense size, building pyramids pose special problems of both organization and engineering. Constructing the Great Pyramids of the Pharaoh Khufu, for example, required that more than 2 million blocks weighing from 2 to more than 60 tons be formed into structure covering two football fields and rising in a perfect pyramid shape 480 feet into the sky. Its construction involved vast numbers of workers which in turn presented complex logistical problems concerning food, shelter and organization. Millions of heavy stone blocks needed not only to be queried and raised to great height, but also to set together with precision in order to create the desired shape. It is precisely the skill and technology required to create the desired shape, which present a problem to anyone trying to understand how the Great Pyramid was built. Modern day archaeologists continue to fall back on the concept of rams, which were raised around the foundation of the pyramids and grew higher as the structure grew taller. The round theory largely discredited but still repeated in one form or another maintains that once the foundation was firm, these rams could have easily been raised around the structure as it was built and provided a means for hauling and positioning tons of stones in precise order. Aside from the problems of the lack of woods in Egypt to make an abundance of such rams, the Angus workers have, would have to have to move the stones up and the impossibility of moving heavy stone bricks and granite slide into position without a crane, which the Egyptian did not have at the time. The most serious problem comes down to the total impracticability of the ram theory. Brea and Hobbes explain, the problem is that of physics. The steeper the angle of an inclination, the more effort necessary to move an object of that incline. So, in order for a relatively small number of men, say 10 or so to drag a two-ton load up a ramp, its angle could not be more than about 80%. Geometry tells us that to reach a height of 480 feet, an inclined plane rising at 8% would have to start almost one mile from its finish. It has been calculated that building a mile-long ramp that rose as high as a great pyramid will require as much material as that needed for the pyramid itself. Workers will have to hard to build the equivalent of two pyramids in the 20-year time frame. The variation on the RAM theory was proposed by the French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin, who also claims RAMs were used inside of the pyramid. Houdin believed that RAMs may have been used externally in the initial stage of construction, but as the pyramid grew taller, work was done internally. The quarried stones were brought in through the entrance and moved up the ramp to their position. This, Houdin claims, would account for the shaft one finds inside the pyramids. This theory, however, does not account for the weights of the stones or the number of workers on the ramp required to move them up and angle inside the pyramids and into position. What do you think about these theories? Please drop your view in comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video with your friends and family on social media and elsewhere. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Peace. 
Merrick Origins.